you had a good Christmas. I did. Did you? Yes. Very yeah. Good. Yeah. We know we had a great Christmas. Uh, first Louisiana Christmas, and it was it was not too hot. It was nice and cool. So I was warned that it could possibly be hot on Christmas, <laughs> but it wasn't. So that was good. And my kids, just seeing their face light up, you know, uh, made my whole weekend. You know, they they were fired up. Did you get snow in Vegas? We have one time. One. We got snow one time and the kids and I we played outside football because it's stuck and everything we played outside all day so it was fun that's gone now that is gone now <laughs> yes yeah did the uh, break do anything good for the psyche of the team for a chance to study more I mean uh, I feel like we've asked you this three or four different times yeah. this season where you got to get over something that's pretty disheartening yeah yeah absolutely um, yeah it's I think the whole the whole year has been it's been tough you know and uh, but the one thing that our guys keep showing is that they just keep fighting, man. You know, it hasn't been perfect or exactly what we wanted, but, um, you know, guys, they continually show up, smile on their face. And that's due to the leadership that's been here for a long time. You know, Cam, T, you know, uh, you know, DeMario, all those guys, man. They just they just keep coming. They just keep working. The coaches do a great job of that as well. Um, but I, I think it allowed a, a lot of guys to get healed up as much as they could. You know, that time helps. And then mentally you get to, you know, not put the tax on your body so much, but mentally you can study, you know, you can get ahead on these, uh, like we said, these two opponents that we, you know, we know that we need wins against. How Derek, important, that, I mean, major yeah. decisions get made in the NFL at the end of seasons yeah. about, about fate of coaches, players. How yeah. important is it for you guys to, to keep trying to show you're heading in the right direction and that this, this whole thing wasn't Yeah, hey, we always want to do that. You know, that's... One thing I was told, no matter you know, what the situation that you're in, uh, in the NFL, I was taught any chance you get to put a jersey on, any chance a coach gets to walk out here, you got to keep proving it every day. Charles Woodson used to tell me that, you're 18. You know, he's like, I'm trying to prove it every day because it don't matter who you are. This Charles Woodson, the best defensive player arguably ever. And he's like, dude, if I don't show that I can you know, tackle or cover or make, it a, make a play, he's like, that's it. You know, and so he's like, you, you always keep that mindset. You know, us as players, uh, you know, whether it's been a great season or a tough season, you're always trying to show that because you, you know that there's always someone waiting to replace you. They got hundreds of college kids about to come up that all want to take our jobs. You know, we all still want to feed our families and same thing, coaches, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's something that we're taught. Like when you first get in the league, that's something talked about by the older guys all the time. Derek, based on your experience, what's kind of the, the <clears throat> difference between a team that stacks up a bunch of wins and finishes like top of the division yeah. and a team that's kind of the position you're in now or yeah. just like how, how fine is that line how fine could it be the, the line is super close um, you know there's some teams that you know I, I've played in my career where you know you play against them and you're like yeah they'll be good in a couple years and then they end up with nine or ten wins and you're like how did that happen you know yeah and it's because these games are so close. You look at how many games that we've had that have been so close that, or whether we had leads or, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, that the, the NFL is designed for everyone to go 500, you know. And, you know, the way they do salary caps and the way free agency and the draft and all this kind of stuff. And you see the details of every assignment. Like, you can't have one guy on one play that it may cost, you know. And then you look back like, man, we needed that one win or we needed that one play. And so, especially when you're growing something, you, you, you have to keep pressing as hard as it is. You know, we talk about as hard as it is after a tough loss or after, you gotta keep pressing into that culture and keep pressing into doing things right because eventually I've seen, when you keep doing right, those things begin to go, all of a sudden, man, it went our way. Oh man, we, we finished that one better. Oh, we won that game. And it's frustrating to go through, but if you go the other way, it's, you end up not having anywhere close to the season you want. You gotta keep growing after it though. Derek, can you, how do you feel the relationship or, or maybe the on-field chemistry has kind of built between you and Juwan Johnson? Yeah, I, I would say the, my relationship with Juwan and really all the skilled guys, you know, chemistry-wise, I knew it would take games playing together. Um, but I'm just so, man, I'm just really, that's one of the things I am proud of is, is that growth that we've all made, you know. Because at first there were some rocky times, you know. There was times where I was expecting this or they thought that and I thought this and all this kind of stuff, and, and slowly, it's, as we've talked about less, again, I forget how the number of weeks, but the number of weeks where things are growing and getting better, especially with Juwan, like his his work ethic, his hunger, his 
his practice habits. And, and another thing, he got healthy. You know, uh, that it's hard when your, your job is to be explosive and run. It's hard for you to do, you know. And uh, he's been able to get healthy and he, he looks great on the practice field. He's looked good in games and in some moments for us. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about him. I've always loved him. And I think the world of him going forward also. I thought he was halfway through that question. I thought he was going to be asking about Chris. And yeah. They, they talked about the rocky times given on the same thing yeah. with Chris. And then he has the flu, and then he has the ankle yeah. sprain, and, and it seems like he's almost had his two best games even fighting through that. What, what do you like about what's really clicking in for him? I, th I think the number one thing that I've <clears throat> always loved about Chris, I, I said to y'all from the beginning, was his mentality. And, you know, you can see the work ethic, you can see other things, but then you see someone go through something. You know, he's been through a lot this season. You know, he's had a lot of stuff going on. And to see him continually come out here, work, communicate with me, get on the same page, you know, we may screw something up in practice. That's what practice for. We screwed up our hair, but then we talk about it, and then we get in the game, and then, man, we hit it. And that's a cool feeling. You know, that, that, that's awesome. That's hard work. And I've just continually seen that from Chris. And, you know, to where now he's having, you know, obviously he's only had two years, but it's a you know, he's having a better season. He's doing, you know, more things. And, and the frustration came from we expect so much more. You know, I expect so much more for both of us. Uh, but the fact that it's getting better, the fact that, you know, our communication is at an all-time high. You know, that, that, that part of it, um, understanding each other, where we're coming from, how we see things, uh, that it's getting better. You know, you, you wish it didn't take, you know, until midseason, but it is what it is. But I, I've seen that growth as well in Juwan and me with, uh, with Chris' relationship and mine. Uh, it's just, it just keeps getting better, and hopefully we can continue that in these last two games to finish strong. Derek, is that kind of consistent through that little rough patch you had in the middle of the season, just kind of the same guy before and after, or is there something that kind of – Something different that happened in that time that kind of propelled him. He's always been the same guy. Yeah. Um, he's always been the same guy. I think. Uh, I think I just need to learn <clears throat> a better way to communicate, you know, uh, so that we could be on the same page. Because not everybody, uh, you know, responds the same way to certain things. And, <clears throat> and and I think that we just got better at communicating together. I think that was the biggest growth for us uh, was the communication. Him, you know, texting me. You know, we jumped on Facetime like I had told y'all back then, and you know, all this kind of stuff. And just getting on the same page because I, I really think he's so he's so special. We can all see the talent, we all see the work ethic and all that, and I just want for him so bad for that that arrow just to keep going up and and so he's been the same. But I think that him and I together, our communication got better, uh, which allowed us to do things better on the field together. Derek, with, with Alante, I know you were one of the guys who talked to him on the sideline after he got pulled from the game. What, mm -hmm. what do you say to a guy in that situation who's a young player and very frustrated? Oh man, yeah, I just. I told him, man, we've all been there. You know, I got, I got benched in a seventh grade game because I changed the play. You know, so, <laughs> you know, I was like, I didn't think the play was going to work, so I changed it. You know, and I got benched, and I wanted to be mad and sit on the sideline and, you know, do those things. You know, last season with, you know, you know if I get hurt and they got paid me, well, I don't get to play. You know, like that hurts. You know, and so when you when you've been through something and, and you know how much somebody cares about something, uh, you know what's going on in their heart. And so I just, man, hey, I love you. I, I told him, I was like, honestly, I got a lot going on. I'm trying to come back. I don't even know what happened, Tay, but whatever happened, just be there for your teammates just like they've been there for you. And he's like, I got you, bro. And he got up, man. He was super positive. He jumped up and was there for his teammates. And that that said a lot about his character because that's hard to do. You know, we've all had moments that weren't our best, you know, in life and in football. Um, and I don't even know what his moment was. I really don't. Uh, but maybe it wasn't his best. And you know that it's good to have someone to put their arm around you and encourage you, but also push you in the right direction. And so there was a couple of guys doing that. Um, and that's one thing I really appreciate about this team is we're always just trying to help each other. We all know how hard it is to be successful and do things right in this league. Uh, so when it doesn't go your way, it's good to have brothers there for you. And have you seen him kind of respond to that this week? He's been great. I, I, I heard DA yelling, just an, what an amazing play, Tay, like on, on one of the plays he made today. So. Uh, you know, I, I haven't seen a change in him. You know, he came in still smiling. He, he, he joked with me again. You know, this morning. You know, so I, I, I saw his, his, uh, you know, his personality, uh, and so that that was a good sign to see, especially bouncing back. And a weekend can do that for you. Sometimes we just need a little time. And uh, he, he had a great day today, from what it sounded like. Doug, when you say you change the communication, is that, do you kind of have to like tailor that to each guy? Is that something you you learn and you, you got to figure out like? 
kind of how to piece that puzzle together with each individual? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question because like I had to learn that. You know, I just was always I just did things my way and. You watch those older guys in the 90s that I grew up watching in the early 2000s. You're like, okay, that's how, it's, <laughs> so that's how it's supposed to be. And then you learn, like, not everybody responds to that. And I, one thing, if I'm just being honest, that taught me that the most was being a dad. I was like, my 10-year-old does not respond the same way as my 7-year-old. My 10 year olds will outwork anybody. My 7-year-old got all the talent in the world, and he's like, ah, I'll just throw it like this, you know. And i got to go after him a little bit, whereas my 10-year-old, you know, I just have to be like, hey, it's okay to screw up. You know, he's so per he's a perfectionist. So the tone is different. And once I learned that as a dad, that they're not all the same. You know, you gotta, you know, you treat them all fair, but not equal, you know? Uh, you know, and I have done the same thing with, you know, my growth as a leader with different positions, not just receivers. But, you know, not everybody responds the same way. I've had guys tell me like, if I screw something up, I want you to yell at me in the middle of practice. Okay. I've had other guys be like, hey man, just come talk to me. I don't like that. Okay, cool. No problem. You know? And so you're, you're making little logs in your mind. You try your best to react the right way. Um, but yeah, it's being a dad has helped me the most, uh, learning that just how to love, love each kid individually and how they respond best. Same thing with my team. How, how do I love them the best and get the best out of them, uh, individually rather than just throwing a blanket over the whole thing. But do you find out that information in the moment or do you have to go behind and find, find it out mm -hmm. how, how do you sift all that through uh, man it takes time uh, it, it takes time You're like one communicating together uh, you know you can absolutely see if I if I were to respond a certain way some people in our circle would be like whoa and then some people be like, yeah I like that you know and then you kind of see the body language you kind of feel that uh, in the moment and so you know for me I just have always just tried to my best to learn as much about each individual as I can you know, whether that's watching, talking to them, getting to figure out what makes them tick, what, what motivates them. Because uh, what motivates them is a direct correlation on how I can talk to them too, how I can push them and try and get the best out of people. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it really is not an easy, simple answer. It's, it's really just a big picture of, you know, being in relationship with, with uh, my teammates. Does that calibration kind of multiply when you're dealing with, you know, injuries along the offense as well? I mean, think yeah. about a couple of weeks ago where you had, you know, AT and Lynn and Keith out there instead of the guys that you had been with yeah. throughout most of the season. Is that something you kind of have to recalibrate in those moments? Yep, absolutely. You know, it helps, it helps uh, you know, that me and Lynn were together, uh, you know, uh, before. And, uh, you know, it, it helps when you have pre-existing relationships. Uh, but when it's all new and new guys are playing that you're not – uh, used to talking to every rep at practice and uh, about certain things and texting back and forth. Uh, absolutely, you know, you got to you got to figure out how to, you know, get the best out of them, how to motivate them, how to get them excited. Um, and honestly, that part to me is fun. Like that part of the leadership is fun to me because, uh, you know, just being a teammate, being a being a being a brother. You know, uh, I've always been someone that wants to be super close to everybody. And so once I can figure out what makes your heart go, what gets you excited, you know, all those things, I, I kind of want to uh, figure that out for each guy. What's the team mindset now that you're in this all swing situation you guys got in the past? It's a playoff mindset, you know. That's one thing we've, we've been talking about is like, guy, this playoff mindset, like, you know, you would hope, you know, me and RC talk about this all the time as quarterbacks, and really it should everybody, but me and RC always talk about like, that should be our mindset all the time. And we and we always talked about that from the beginning. Gruden, same thing, Co Ole, same thing. We always talked about that should, that should be our mindset in OTAs. And when you carry that mindset, it's easy. My wife asked me this the other night, like how, like in the, like when, just a general football question, she was like, how do you like handle like the pressure? I was like, well, when you're in it, like you've, you've worked so hard and you've put so much into it, you don't even really think about it in that moment. You know, you're just, you're just out there and you're just playing. And so, you know, for, for some guys, the younger guys, you teach them how to be in that mindset early, and now they're going to get a real taste of it, you know. And so uh, for me individually, uh, experience helps. You know, I've been in this situation a couple of times, and you know what it takes. I'm going to go out there and give everything I have all week long, and then on Sunday give my best that I can give. And, you know, I, I know if I gave everything that I had, you can live with that. Uh, it may hurt. It may be really exciting. I don't know, but you can't think about that. You just got to stay focused on that process, and that's kind of how what keeps my mind focused when I just focus on that. Derek, do you have a relationship with Russell Wilson, or would you reach out to him at all? I, I don't know if you saw the news that they're 
I don't know if they're moving on permanently from him, but for the rest oh, of okay. this season. Oh, um, sat down. been there, you know. I, I understand, you know, he's got a big number. If he gets hurt and they don't know if he's staying or leaving, I, you know, I, you know, it, it's frustrating. He, he knows, everyone knows he can play. Everyone knows he can complete passes. Everyone knows, uh, you know, you, when you surround any, any good quarterback, you surround, you're surrounded with, you know, a lot of talent, a lot of good guys, you, you, the, the results come. And, you know, you know, for us, you know, as quarterbacks, it's so hard to do. So anytime anyone reaches out, it means something, you know. And so I, I've known Russ, uh, you know, for years. You know, we used to play in that same preseason game every year because Oakland, Seattle, the last game of the year, we'd always play. And so for years, we would see each other. For years, different events, uh, you know, little NFL commercial, whatever. We've seen each other and had that. So my heart goes for him. Uh, you know, and, and then is Stiddy going to play? Is, sorry, Stiddy? I think that's the plan. Yeah, Stiddy. I, and I love Stiddy, you know. Yeah, like me and him, great relationship last year and still do, you know. Uh, and I wish him the best. I know Russ wishes him the best. We are. It's so hard to do that any time this stuff happens, you always wish whoever's playing, man, you're rooting for them, you pull for them because they got families too. You know, this is tough to make a career out of. But you you root for you know Russ and Stiddy at the same time. But you definitely the messages are different. You know, uh, but I, if I if I can, I reach out to him and you know make sure he's doing all right. But he he's a competitor. He'll be fine. Yeah, it feels like you've mentioned Ronald Curry like quite a few times over the course of the past few weeks. Can you just talk a little bit about the, or tell us a little bit about the impact that he's had for you? Oh man, well I don't even know where to begin, man. I'm glad you asked about him because he is an amazing football coach. And not only on this preparation, his work ethic, the communication he has with the quarterback, uh, he understands, you know, he played, uh, you know, he, he, he knows, he, he's been the, like literally the best athlete ever, you know, to come out of high school, you know. So he he understands being on a big stage and the pressures and all that. And so he just he's just so cool and calm all the time. And as a quarterback, that's what we need. While, while the chaos is going on, it's good to have someone that's just cool and honest. And hey, I, I've been watching the last two weeks. Your your left foot on these throws, it's that's not good enough. You got to put it. Oh man, appreciate that. He's like, you got you. Let's work on that today. And like he's a great, he so he's always pushing me. Even today, he, hey, you know, if, if this happens on that throw, it's not on time. Don't throw that late. That's going to be a problem for you. Do this. That great reminder. You know, he's he is he doesn't miss. He doesn't miss. Like doesn't let anything go by. He doesn't. And as a player, that's all you can ask for from a coach is that they give you your best. Give us their best. And he does that. But I, I think he'd be, you know, a heck of a coach. You know, head coach someday. You know, whatever aspirations he has, I think he'd be amazing because I know just personally in our room how much we love him. How much have you guys discussed the margin of the previous meeting with Tampa Bay? You know, I think it might oh, have yeah. been the most lopsided game. I guess the extent to, to which you really feel that margin may be misleading relative to how the teams match up or wanting to prove that or anything like that. You know? Well, you know, we are we are what we've earned. You know, and you know we earned a loss that day, which it wasn't good. They they got after us, and I'll never take that away, you know, from anybody. They they did a great job, um, and we we needed to do better that day. But you know we're excited for another challenge. You know they're leading our division. They're an amazing team with amazing coaches. They got great. They got talent everywhere. They got champions, you know, on that team all over the place, and it's another tough challenge for us. Uh, but it's one we're excited for. You know, you never back down from a challenge. You go out there, face it full. You know. You know, head on and give it your best shot. And so we're excited to play against them. But the margin, all that, you don't really talk about that. You know, even when you win a game, when you lose a game, when you watch the film, you're just making corrections on how to get better. You know, and you're not necessarily saying, well, it was 11 points or it was 16 or it was two. Or we don't, You don't really do that. It's just like these are the three things. we got to do these better in practice this week so we do it better in the game. And that's just kind of been, like, my experience, like, for the last 10 years, like, football-wise. Is that why you the sweeps? Um, seem to be difficult because of the ability to make those corrections and do it over. Yeah, I've, just in my just in my experience, uh, you know, it's it's rare where a team it's just so lopsided that they have no chance. You know, you know, it, eventually it, it comes back. You know, and it's back and forth, and that's kind of what we talked about earlier about the NFL. It's just it's made to be so even, and especially in the division, you're drafting against oh they have that we need this free agent we need this they have that and that's why it usually it goes pretty much back and forth as you know the years go on thanks guys thank you awesome appreciate it yep thank you